Hey, one of the areas that Michael and I focus on a lot is the use of data and evidence. Whether it's within our communities of practice approach, our individual coaching, or a teacher team and leadership team coaching, data and evidence are really important, and we know this. You know, schools are awash with data, but we don't always do anything with them. Together, he and I build an understanding through our conversations and meetings, and we take time to process and sometimes have to walk away from the conversation so we can process on our own. It's what we also do when we facilitate workshops. And as you all know, conversations are ways our students can build language too, which is why things like teacher talk versus student talk can be such an issue. For full disclosure though, I've always had a love-hate relationship with data. Many years ago, my friend and former director of the National School Climate Center, Jonathan Cohen, actually said data needs to be used as a flashlight, not like a hammer. And the hammer approach kind of, it breeds compliance and fear. And the flashlight approach helps us have more of a, a learner's mindset. So in our work, Michael and I draw on research of Victoria Bernhardt. She actually allowed us to use her work in our book, Leading with Intention. Bernhardt really focuses on four areas of data, which are demographic, perceptions data, student learning data, and school processes data. She suggests that we use all four areas to get a full picture of what our students need. Now, in our case, Michael and I actually use all four with the participants that we work with. For example, we use pre-engagement surveys to get demographic data. It's important for us to know whether our participants are coming from rural, suburban, or urban. Why? Because sometimes in rural areas, you have fewer people responsible for more of the work. Or when we look at urban and rural, we notice that those are the schools that have teacher attrition areas, more like grade level or content areas where they're having teacher attrition issues. For our exit tickets, we draw on perceptions data, which is also a part of our pre-engagement surveys too. We ask participants about the environment and what they were more likely to use when they go back to school. Initially, we ask them what barriers to learning are preventing them from going deeper with their actions. When it comes to student learning data, we actually use Mentimeter, which is an online engagement tool. It's completely anonymous and we get real time formative assessment and post engagement surveys to ask what they learned and how they will use it. And because of our work as long-term hybrid approach, our pre-engagement surveys focus on how they used what they learned and what they feel they need to be able to do next. And as for our school processes data, Michael, Michael talks a lot about, you know, during the presentation about this thing called facilitating the agenda where we specifically talk about strategies we use with participants in those sessions. Because believe it or not, participants miss some of the strategies we're using. So we wanna be more intentional about why we're doing what we're doing. You know, as Mike and I explore data and evidence more and hold each other accountable for actually using what we're collecting, I'm finding my relationship with data is more love than hate. So the question is, how are you using data and evidence in your work?